This video proves that the inflection points for a normal curve occur at the mean minus one standard deviation and the mean plus one standard deviation, and it uses calculus to do so. Here is the function formula for a normal curve, and here is an example normal curve. This one, the mean, is shown with this at this dashed red line here, it being at 1 for this example. And the standard deviations are on either side of it, on the left and the right. An inflection point is a point where the curve, its rate of increase, is changing from a steadily increasing now to a steadily decreasing, or from a steadily decreasing to a steadily increasing. So as we move from left to right here, it's going steeper and steeper and steeper, and now it's not, it's going less and less steep. And here it's going more and more down, and now it's less and less down. Those two inflection points. Using calculus, <clears throat> inflection points can occur only at hypercritical values. These are the places where the second derivative is either zero or undefined. The second derivative is always defined, as we will see here. There's no place where it's undefined because of the fact that the standard deviation is positive. So we're going to focus on where it's zero. And if the second derivative changes sign across one of these values, one of these hypercritical values, then that point is an inflection point. Here is the calculation of the first derivative and then the calculation of the second derivative. Since the function involves an exponential function, e to the x is part of it. Recall that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And since we're using composition of functions, we need the chain rule for, for derivatives. And also to do the second derivative, the product rule is required. As an exercise, you can follow this through step by step to see how we end up down here with the second derivative being a product of three factors. To determine when this product is zero, we have to look when the factors are zero. The first factor is never zero because e to the x is never zero and this coefficient is not zero. So we only then need to focus on the second two factors. Setting each of those equal to zero and rearranging those equations, we see that they do occur at the points that we're interested in. The mean minus the standard deviation and the mean plus the standard deviation. However, we're not done. We have to make sure <clears throat> that the second derivative changes sign across these values. In order to do that, we notice that the since the standard deviation is positive and the exponential function is everywhere positive, the first factor up here, since it has a minus sign in it, is always negative. <clears throat> the second and third factors can be rewritten converting to uh, fractions here, adding fractions and subtracting fractions. We can write them as these two forms here and then construct this table. Because sigma is always positive, we only need to focus on the numerators of these two factors. Looking at the three intervals to the left of the leftmost hypercritical value between the two values and to the right, we want to see what happens to the sign of this product. Looking at each factor, the first factor is always negative. In these intervals, the other uh, factors numerator here goes negative, positive, and positive. That can clearly be seen by looking at the values in these intervals versus this expression. And the other one is positive, positive, negative. Therefore, these uh, factors multiplied together to be positive, negative, positive, 
and we see that they do it does change sign as it crosses those hypercritical values therefore the inflection points do occur at mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma